relatively simple question goes on to be in the form of which factors influence the growth of wild plants around in India. Discuss their economic significance. Now the catch word in this case is going to be wild plants. It's not about domesticated plants. It's essentially going to be about the flora that finds itself growing in wild. And that is natural. That means undisturbed by the human beings. But then, unless we happen to domesticate it, how is it that they can go on to be significant? So their significance, that means the significance that is differentiated here is, uh, despite being wild, they are significant. Uh, maybe that we have not been able to use it. Maybe that we have not been able to know that as well. Now, this question was asked, uh, the context of asking this question was, uh, of course, uh, one was the COVID period. Uh, and uh, that was in news, largely because... Uh, a lot of wild plants were eh, very able to grow when human interference was not at all present in that place. Eh. And because they started growing, eh, that's the basic reason that they started growing, eh, the topic was eh, going to be insignificant. Eh. This is scope is that, of course, you have to be carefully worded in this case. Eh, worded in the sense that is we are talking about wild, we are not going to be talking only about the plants. Eh. Of course, eh, this is one topic that is going to be compact factual and the question is discuss it. So it goes on to make it easy, life easy for you. The problem face in this case is that is uh, where exactly is it that you can go to find this material and how is it that you can actually go to find a material for this type of topic here. And of course the sources are going to be generally well known in this case. Uh, coming on to the discussion of this topic here. The first part first uh, that is uh, the uh, term wild uh, when applied to plants or plant species, it refers to those that grow spontaneously in a self-maintaining populations in natural or semi-natural ecosystem and which can exist independently of direct human action. This term is contrasted with cultivated or domesticated plants or plant species that have arisen through human actions such as selection or through breeding or that depend on a management for their continued existence. Wild plants don't require a management for their continued existence at all. In practice, the distinction is not an easy one to make as there is a, a complete spectrum between completely wild and completely domesticated types. And depending on it, this depends on the degree of a human intervention or management involved in this case. They are affected eh, by many factors eh, and that goes on to include, uh, uh, some of these factors can go to include climate, it's going to be one of them. That is, uh, we are talking about moisture availability and uh, of course temperature as well. That is moisture, that is the presence eh, in uh, humid climates of coarse gravelly soils which are pervious, eh, may result in grass replacing forest. Eh, and this happens in many places in peninsular India. In contrast, conversely, water tentative clays may give rise to swamp with associated vegetation. Swampy vegetation in this case goes on to include some of those types of uh, mangroves, uh, like that of Sundarbans. Uh, and of course, uh, it, uh, it, we are going to be talking about in semi-arid and desert areas as well. There can be swampy type of plants uh, which are going to be found uh, in a uh, Bheels of, of Rajasthan, particularly they are going to be in between these two types of sand dunes. And they are of significance because they are economic significance because they are going to provide a good amount of a fodder. And other than that, they are of a medicinal value. Moisture availability, that is, those type of plants that are going to be hydrophytes. The plants that are moisture loving and live either in water or in very damp or humid regions. Now, these are going to be uh, hygropilous plants of, uh, such as the water hyacinth, mangrove, swamp rice and banana. Now, water hyacinth is significant largely because uh, water hyacinth is very, very important in trying to curb pollution. If you have a completely polluted stretch of a stream or a river and then you're going to plant water hyacinth thereafter, water hyacinth will be responsible for cleaning the entire of the stream. Mangrove has a, a good number of trees, eh? like in Sundarbans, you have Sundari trees, eh? the bark of which trees go on to be significant, eh? which is eh, for the purpose, used for the purpose of leather tanning, 
that is why they are economically significant and swamp rice and banana particularly banana again the bark of banana is going to be important and that is being used for the purpose of paper making that is going to use for the purpose of cloth making also at the same time we know of some of these type of designer cloths xerophytes are those type of plants that are adapted to generally prevailing conditions of drought and they going to include cacti the cacti is that is cacti cactus that we are talking about that has some medicinal values euphorbias that again going to be having medicinal values and which are going to be used by the people in the desert regions or in the semi arid regions for the purpose of treating their some of the diseases associated with pain and what not there are other desert plants and xerophilus plants which are adapted to seasonal changes in rainfall and grow in areas of alternating wet and dry conditions the third in this case is going to be tropophilus plants the tropophilus plants have the power to make adjustments necessary to changing condition other than that temperature is of course temperature can go to be minimum and maximum there is a minimum temperature below which cannot exist a maximum temperature beyond it which cannot live and then an optimum temperature which is most favorable for it and which it grows most vigorously now from that perspective not every way that you can go to give an example but then these are the factors that do go to affect wild plants light is a factor is another factor in this case light is a a factor affecting the reproductive function of the plants now from an economic significance how much amount of reproduction and how much amount of fast reproduction can going to take place that determines the productivity of the plants for many species light is a necessary condition for flowering and seed production the greater the amount of seed production the greater will be the economic significance and also the winds that go to cause dispersal of these plants in this case then you have adaptive conditions that is going to be soil now although the porosity and the thickness of the soil may influence a plant growth but the most important property affecting the distribution of plants is probably the chemical composition of the soil soil is an important source of oxygen nitrogen carbon phosphorus and sulfur all of which are necessary for the production of fundamental organic substances plants often require specific trace elements for their normal growth and it may well be that certain species grow only poorly and not at all because of certain type of a specific mineral deficiency for example they can be iron copper zinc molybdenum magnesium chlorine which they possess and there is no obvious link with organic substances and appear nonetheless to be very necessary for the plant life that is the role of a soil physiography has its role now physiography means we are talking about a structure relief altitude slope aspect all of them relief can be responsible for creating a particular condition of moisture we are talking about a when you go on to be facing the winds and particularly those type of winds that are moisture laden there is a particular condition of moisture temperature and light by providing an obstacle to air movement all three of them by providing obstacle or by presenting a slopes to direct insulation that means if they are removed away from the sun for a good amount of a time then that is going to prevent it and minor undulations of the land surface can be of great significance for plant life and particularly in some places like that of higher reaches of kashmir ladakh and uttaranchal all of them or uttarakhand it is in these areas that is the southern south facing slope or the sun facing slopes go on to grow some of those type of crops which are used as meadows which are going to be used for the purpose of a of uh, allowing their livestock to graze over these regions now these are some of these places which are going to be grazed by their sheep and so on which ultimately go on to bear certain type of wool as well and it is this wool that goes on to be significant and these are the plants uh, which are also going to be significant uh, from uh, another perspective that uh, they go on to form some of these type of uh, staple food for the people also in the region so it has two purposes that is uh, for the human beings as well as for the animals both of them
talking about physiography and taking extensive aspect associated with it. One of them is going to be associated with the drainage. And the influence of drainage upon vegetation is very, uh, very well illustrated in tropical areas where three types of wild plants are found. One is mangrove, which is associated with the brackish water of the tidal rivers and grow in a perpetually waterlogged area. Now, these are significant because uh, they provide habitat to the animals. Uh, they're going to provide a good amount of uh, logging materials uh, because they are very, very hard. Uh, imagine uh, the trees are going to be having uh, that is a spirit like root uh, which go on to bear the mechanical weight of the entire of the tree. And that is uh, why it is going to be significant. So, economically significant. That is one. Swamp forest which occurs in alluvial plains and suffer regular freshwater inundations. Uh, and rainforest. Now, rainforest is going to include tre trees like that of Thun, Poon, Ebony, Mahogany, Gurjan, Hopia, Nagkesar, Chaplas, and whatnot. Now, all of those type, these type of trees, eh, they have exceptional properties. For example, going to talk about Mahogany, Ironwood, Bishopwood, Chaplas. Eh, they have, eh, they are some of those type of trees eh, which can go on to be used for the purpose eh, of making eh, furniture eh, like no other no other uh, tree at all. Maltic refers to the influence of uh, organisms and these going to include microorganisms such as decomposers and decomposers uh, and bacteria break down the organic matter, the remains of plant and uh, dead animals in the soil into various types of nutrients uh, and then recycle or used uh, for uh, by growing uh. More, moreover, I mean, secondly, numerous animals uh, that are going to be uh, to be associated with uh, and interact with the plants uh, forming the vegetation. Many plants, uh, as we have noted, rely largely on uh, insects to fertilize them, and they can go to flourish and perpetuate themselves only through the assistance of the animal world uh, and by no one else. Uh. It is these animals which are largely responsible for the dispersal of them. Some birds. And animals prey on others, so they keep the injuries and activities of certain creatures in complete check. Now that is significant because that goes on to make your cattle healthy. You call it economic significance or ecological significance, that is same. Saying it in something else, in other words, the animals may live with plants in a balanced community, that is the flora and fauna in a state of equilibrium. And on the other hand, Sometimes fauna may be responsible for fundamental changes in the character of the wild plants. And there are indeed many cases of plants being destroyed and the vegetation modified through the activities of animals and insects in this case. And then you have anthropogenic factors and fire. Anthropogenic is a factor. Of course, wild plants can be influenced by that. Human influence the clearance, burning, drainage of the wild plants. Man, of course, if he is a man, in, they they going to influence eh, a plants in a variety of ways. For example, the draining of the land and thereby squeezing out water loving species. Eh, and eh, this is how human beings have altered the vegetation at many levels and eh, uh, low lying areas and the marsh areas as well. So, whatever economic significance eh, they may have been trying to create, eh, what they have done is eh, what they have actually done is eh, that eh, they have a eh, to a large extent destroyed the economic significance, but then that is a part of it. Human beings have been responsible for introduction of some of those type of plants, eh? like eh, they were well, the one eh, which are responsible for introduction of Bermuda or water hyacinth as well. And they are, in a sense, economically significant because they can go on to protect you from, eh, from pollution. Other reason, the last is fire. Of the physical impact, eh, fire is no doubt within a very short space of a time eh, can impact large area which can be devastated eh, and eh, they can go to transform the environment eh, which has taken a lot of time for the purpose of eh, getting itself eh, stabilized in that eh, region. Fire as a natural factor in the Samana areas. Unless a eh, fire takes place, eh, it's not possible that some of the shells of the plant eh, that is, uh, some of the shells which are going to cover the seeds, they will go to break. And unless they go to break, there is no way, there is absolutely no way that there can be regeneration taking place once again in the Samana areas. And it is this regeneration which is responsible for uh, 
some of the type of grasses that we're going to find, for example, moons, which can going to be used for the purpose of a weaving. Eh? What people want to say that is a, a sleeping cot, which in the rural areas, eh? they are the ones which have been used eh, in uh, some time eh, for the purpose of weaving eh, the roof of the house as well, because they're going to be very, very strong in that case. Eh? So it is a uh, ecological significance, which is responsible for building the economic significance as well. To have more such discussions and analysis, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos.